Good evening, welcome everyone. We're just gonna give it a few more uh, minutes for those that are joining us so that they have an opportunity to log in and we will start very shortly. So good evening, everyone, and welcome. I uh, noticed the participants is starting to slow down a little, so we might as well get started for the, this evening. Uh, welcome to our Choosing My Success Inclusive Grade 9 course selection evening uh, for students, parents, and guardians. Uh, we hope that this evening we'll be able to answer many of your questions, um, but we also have an opportunity for you to ask us questions throughout the process as well. I uh, just wanted to let everyone know that our webinar this evening will be recorded. And anyone who has signed up will receive a copy of the recording, as well as links to any documents mentioned this evening and a sheet with all of the questions and answers uh, sent out to you uh, next week. I'll begin with our land acknowledgments. The Durham District School Board acknowledges that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships, both historic and modern, with the territories upon which our school board and schools are located. Today, this area is home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island. We acknowledge that the Durham region forms a part of the traditional and treaty territories of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, the Mississauga peoples, and the treaty territory of the Chippewas of Georgina Island. It is on these ancestral and treaty lands that we teach, learn, and live. The Durham District School Board also recognizes that Indigenous rights are distinct, and in the exercise of those rights, Indigenous staff and students shall not be subjected to actions with the aim or effect of depriving these distinct rights. The Durham District School Board is also committed to learning environments that are safe, welcoming, respectful, equitable, accessible, inclusive, and free from discrimination while placing human rights and equity at the center. On this next slide, you'll see the Durham District School Board priorities. Uh, and throughout the presentation tonight, these are uh, embedded within that presentation, uh, as well as they are connected directly to the specific aspects of the transition planning process. Um, all of our district priorities are built on the importance of identities of our students, their families, and with the foundation in Indigenous rights and human rights. And before I pass things over, uh, I just wanted to thank uh, all of the parents and guardians uh, and students for attending this evening. But I also wanted to thank Nicole for her leadership in coordinating tonight's session. Um, and also to Laura, Colin, Allison, and Jeff, our amazing pathway counselors, uh, for all that they do and also for their time this evening. And I'll turn it over to Nicole. Thank you very much. Well, welcome everyone to our grade eight student and family transition information night hosted by Student Success. So our panel of presenters this evening includes uh, Stephen Nevels, who is our superintendent of equitable education. Four of our grade seven and eight transition pathway counselors that Stephen just introduced. So we've got Laura, Colin, Jeff and Allison, and I'm Nicole Dolabai. I'm the facilitator for guidance, student success, centers for success and our pathway counselors. We know that the transition from grade eight to grade nine is an important phase, and we're pleased to host this event for you. So you and your students may have already attended a transition night or a transition event hosted by your high school or the one that was hosted earlier this month by the Inclusive Student Service Department. So some of the information that we present this evening may not be new to you, but we do hope that this will provide you with additional information on the Choosing My Success initiative, provide some insight into what de-streaming is, introduce you to our inclusive grade nine program, and give you some information on course selection dates and the process for selecting courses. Um, as Superintendent Nevels had mentioned, we will be responding to your questions, so please post them in the Q&A, and we'll do our best to either respond to them live or next week you'll receive a recording of this video and an email with all of the links we reference and answers to your questions. So 
So let's begin by exploring the Choosing My Success initiative. So this initiative was started in the DDSB as a way to support students and their families in planning for their transition to secondary school. So we've got key resources, such as the Choosing My Success student guide, which we will explore later on this evening, and the individual pre-populated course planning sheet, which was emailed to all grade eight students the week of February 6th, they were developed. And then we had supports put in place, such as our transition pathway counselors, who support all of our grade seven and eight students across the board, including those who are currently at DDSB at Home Elementary. At the core of our Choosing My Success initiative are our three student success beliefs. So we believe that all students can be successful, that success comes in many forms, and there are many paths to success. And these core beliefs, they form the foundation of the work that we do with supporting students. We recognize that education directly influences a student's trajectory and to ensure equitable outcomes for all of our students, we focused our direction for intentional transition planning to secondary school across the entire system for grade eights and their families. And this focused approach supports our grade eight students through the course selection process for high school in order to make thoughtful decisions while setting high expectations to reach their potential. So there are several resources available that support our students and families with pathway planning. So Choosing My Success is a transition guide for students planning for grade nine. And this document is um, in all of our elementary schools. It was delivered to your students by their pathway counselors. And if your student happens to be at DDSB at home, then it was mailed to you before the winter break. Refining My Pathway supports planning for grades 11 and grade 12, while designing my future helps students plan for their initial post-graduation destination. And the Pathway to Student Success document is a comprehensive resource, which provides an overview of all of the focus programs offered at our secondary schools. And as our students make their way through high school, they will be faced with many choices and decisions about their future. So information in these documents will help them as they plan for their senior years in high school. So all of these resources are located on the DDSB website and the links for them will be included in our follow-up email to you. So I'd like to look at a little, uh, a little bit more at two of these key resources for you that really support our students as they prepare to transition to grade nine and make course selections. So the first one is the Choosing My Success Transition Guide. And the second one is the Individualized Pre-Populated Course Planning Tool. So as I mentioned, the CMS guide, your students already have them. And the course planning tool that was emailed to, um, to students, or excuse me, that, that was emailed to families um, the, uh, the week of February 6th. So that particular file is password protected and you would access it the same way that you would access a report card for your student. If you had problems accessing the document, or maybe you didn't get the document, you can reach out to your student's uh, principal and they can support you as they also have a copy of it. So the Choosing My Success Transition Guide reflects our commitment to ensure that all DDSB grade eight students transitioning to grade nine will make thoughtful course selection choices that are reflective of their commitment to their success in both elementary school and beyond. When your student enters high school, they are working towards the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, the Ontario Secondary School Certificate, or the Certificate of Accomplishment. The Ontario Secondary School Diploma is often called the OSSD. There are four requirements to obtaining the OSSD. The first is earning 30 credits in total by the end of high school, 18 of which are compulsory or mandatory, meaning courses that you have to take, and 12 that are electives, meaning courses that you get to choose. In addition to earning 30 credits, students working towards an OSSD need to acquire 40 hours of community service, complete the literacy requirement, and earn at least two online learning credits. Grade eight students can begin accumulating their volunteer hours in July, 2023. 
High school guidance departments share volunteer opportunities with students, but Volunteer Durham and Youth Opportunities Ontario are also great resources to explore. Additional information about community involvement hours, along with the form to complete, are located on the DDSB website. Students, meeting, students meet the literacy requirement by either passing the grade 10 literacy test or through the grade 12 literacy course. The test is based on the literacy expectations up until the end of grade nine, and students must achieve a level three to be successful on the test. If a student is unsuccessful, it is possible to retake the test in grade 11, or they can enroll in the literacy course, which also meets the literacy requirement for graduation. In effect, starting 2020-2021, the Ministry of Education has added two mandatory e-learning courses to the graduation requirement. That would see students taking two courses independently online during their high school years. These courses are part of the required 30 credits and are offered during the school day. Online course offerings are available during course selection and students select them in My Blueprint. For families who wish to opt out of the online learning credits, they can complete the opt out form. This form is available on our board website or from your high school guidance department and can be submitted anytime during your student's time in high school. For students working towards an Ontario Secondary School Certificate, or OSSC, they need to have earned 14 credits, which include seven compulsory and seven elective courses. They are not required to complete the 40 hours of community involvement, the literacy requirement, or the two online learning credits. The Certificate of Accomplishment is for students who may be taking K courses, which are non-credit courses, or who may leave school before fulfilling the requirements of a diploma or certificate. The Certificate of Accomplishment may be a useful means of recognizing achievement for students who plan to take certain kinds of further training or who plan to find employment directly after leaving school. Students do not need to earn credits, nor do they need to complete the 40 hours of community involvement, the literacy requirement, or take two online courses to be granted a Certificate of Accomplishment. Both the Ontario Secondary School Certificate and the Certificate of Accomplishment are graduation options available to students in certain special education programs and would be discussed with you and your student along with the special education resource teacher. The Ministry of Education and the Durham District School Board are committed to addressing systemic discrimination and breaking down the barriers for Indigenous, Black, and racialized students, students from low-income households, students with disabilities, and students with special education needs. In the Durham District School Board, we are introducing the umbrella term inclusive grade nine to complement ministry mandates and continue the work we have been doing as a system by creating more equitable opportunities and outcomes for our students, increasing engagement and contributing to the overall success of our students. This ensures that all of our students, whether they're working towards an OSSD, an OSSC, or a certificate of accomplishment have programming options that support their future plans. The inclusive grade nine program is a continuation of our recent thinking around pathways and expanding upon our choosing my success initiative. This will provide students and families with another year to make decisions around their pathways, including those identified into a small class placement as part of their IPRC. In the past, grade nine students were streamed into academic, applied, or locally developed courses based on their perceived academic ability and initial post-secondary destination. The Ministry of Education, after an abundance of evidence from around the province and globally, realized this was a harmful process, which clearly exposed the systematic racism that occurs within many systems, but specifically within the education system. Now in grade nine, students will take d stream courses, which means they will no longer be separated into academic or applied streams. Instead, they will take three d streamed courses, English, math, and science. And the rest of the courses will be a combination of academic and open level, open level courses. Some of these students may also take locally developed courses. De-streaming is one step towards addressing systemic discrimination and helping to break down barriers for our indigenous, black, and racialized students, students from low-income households, students with disabilities, 
and students with special education needs to maintain equitable opportunities for future pathway options for all of our students. Research indicates that there is a disproportionate number of racialized students in applied level classes in Ontario. Ontario students and parents have indicated that they consider course type selection in grade eight to be too early. By de-streaming grade nine, students and families have an additional year of high school to decide on a particular pathway and keep course options open. This will support all students while preparing them for senior secondary courses that allow them to pursue post-secondary education pathways of their choice, such as apprenticeship, college, or university. Research has also shown that students benefit from learning in groups of students of varied abilities and interests in which teachers have high and appropriate expectations for all students and a clear understanding that all students can be successful. Let's have a look at the programming options for grade nine. When students are selecting courses in my blueprint for grade nine, they will have several options. This is an image of what students will see when they log into my blueprint. My blueprint is a web-based career exploration and planning tool that grade eight students use to explore career and education options. Students can complete assessment tools, explore specialist high skills major programs offered at their school, read about post-secondary options, complete resumes and cover letters, or search for employment or volunteer opportunities. The education planner in my blueprint is used at all DDSB high schools. It allows students and families to select high school courses together online, track graduation requirements, and plan for the future. Grade nine students take English, mathematics, science, geography, and usually French. They select three additional courses, which may include health and physical education, drama, art, music, technology, business, or social science. These offerings will vary by secondary school. If your student does not see the correct high school when they log into their My Blueprint, please have them contact their pathway counselor through their Google Classroom or speak to their grade eight teacher. As previously mentioned, the Ministry of Education has been expanding the offerings of de-streamed courses. Students going into grade nine will now select de-streamed math, science, and English. These are compulsory courses. These de-streamed courses have new curriculum that has been developed by the Ministry of Education. Other than in particular situations where a student may be accessing certain locally developed curriculum, grade nine math, science, and English will only be offered as de-streamed. In addition to taking the three de-streamed courses, students will take inclusive academic courses for geography and French in grade nine. Inclusive academic refers to courses that use the academic course curriculum with the goal of increasing equitable outcomes and pathways for all students. French and geography are compulsory courses. If your student will be continuing in the French Immersion Program in Grade 9, there will be inclusive Grade 9 French Immersion courses available for some subjects. Students will be able to select courses from the inclusive Grade 9 open offerings. What courses are offered will vary between schools, and your student will be able to see the specific open courses when they complete their course selection in My Blueprint. These courses are appropriate for all students and are not linked to a specific post-secondary destination. For some students, their elementary administrator, grade eight teacher, special education teacher, or inclusive student services facilitator may recommend they take inclusive grade nine locally developed courses in math, English, or science. These options still exist for students who would have traditionally taken locally developed courses. Locally de developed courses can and do count towards the Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Locally developed courses use curriculum that has been developed by the school board to support the individual needs of students who may not have been working at grade level in elementary. It is meant to support them with either transitioning to other grade nine programming the following year or continuing with locally developed courses. If you think locally developed courses may be the right choice for your student, please connect with your CERT, elementary principal, or grade eight teacher. 
French is one of the compulsory credits required to earn the Ontario Secondary School Diploma. The FSF 1.0 course is meant for students who have never taken French or have had very limited opportunities to engage with French in elementary school. If you are wondering if this is the right course for your student, please reach out to your child's grade eight teacher or CERT. In addition to the courses previously outlined, our schools offer K-level courses for our students in special class placements and may be working towards a certificate of accomplishment. These are alternative, alternative non-credit courses for students with special education needs that are designed to support the growth of fundamental skills, independence, and self-care. The expectations for these courses are individualized and outlined on your student's IEP. Examples of K-level courses are personal life skills, exploring the world of work, and personal health and fitness. We've now covered the streaming and the inclusive grade nine program. As it's a lot of information, I'd like to take this opportunity to share an additional resource. What Families Want to Know About DStreaming and Inclusive Grade 9 is a six-page resource which provides an overview of DStreaming, the Inclusive Grade 9 program, who is able to help you with the course selection process, information about locally developed courses, and supports available in Grade 9. This document will be emailed to all participants after tonight's webinar as part of the resource package for families. It's also located on the DDSB website under Programs and Learning. Now that we've reviewed the changes to the grade nine program, let's have a look at how you and your student can prepare for the course selection process. This slide provides you with important dates pertaining to course selection. My blueprint opened for student submissions on February 14th at 10 a.m. and will close March 2nd at 4 p.m. Please note that courses are not filled on a first come first served basis. Requests for courses are downloaded at the end of the registration period and decisions about courses are made by the home school at that time. Families play an integral role in supporting students as they transition to grade nine. We encourage you to work through these steps with your child over the next few weeks. The first task is for students to complete the individual pathways plan through My Blueprint. In the DDSB, we use a web-based platform called My Blueprint for grades seven to 12 students to complete their individual pathways plan and to select their courses. Over the past few months, the Choosing My Success Pathway counselors have been working with the grade eight classes to support them as they complete their individual pathway plan, IPP in My Blueprint. Students have been supported by their grade eight teacher. Ask your student to show you the progress they've made to review some of the tasks they have completed. The week of February 6, parents or guardians of all grade eight students received an email from the DDSB that contained the pre-populated course planning tool. It is a password protected file, which can be accessed the same way you access your child's report card. If you have trouble accessing the document, all elementary school principals have a copy. So please reach out to them for assistance. The individual pre-populated course planning tool contains EQAO data, marks from the grade seven June report card, grade eight attendance information, and grade eight progress report card learning skills. Students are encouraged to review the information with their family as they complete the course selection progress process. Students and families are also encouraged to use the reflection questions located on the pre-populated planning tool to guide course selection choices. Although the pre-populated course planning tool contains reflection questions to assist students as they select courses, they are also encouraged to use the education and career life planning inquiry questions. Who am I? What are my opportunities? Who do I want to become? What is my plan for achieving my goal? That are located on the back of the sheet. The four-step inquiry process is ongoing and cyclical, cyclical and helps students establish their own personal goals and individualized pathways for their future. This inquiry process is an important foundation to the learning and activities taking place with each DDSB grade eight class as students work on completing their individual pathway plan in my blueprint. Finally, students select and submit their courses through the course planner in my blueprint. Additional information on the course selection process and how parents can review and approve their students course selections 
will be discussed a little later in tonight's presentation. Before we begin looking at the course selection process, I apologize, I'm gonna turn my camera off. I'm having some camera issues. Before we begin looking at the course uh, selection process, let's begin, let's look at how to decode a course code. This is a useful page for students and families to reference during the course selection process. Let's use the example of ENL 1W1 as pictured on this page to help us learn this code. When students are reviewing and selecting courses for next year, they will be faced with course codes, which have six character identifiers. The first five characters of the course code are determined by the Ministry of Education, while the sixth character is used by school boards to identify a specific characteristic of the course. When examining a course code, the first letter in the course code identifies the course's department area. The fourth character identifies the grade level, where a one refers to grade nine, a two, grade 10, and so on. The fifth character identifies the course type. In grade nine, a D indicates academic, an L is used for locally developed, and an O is used for open level. Finally, a W is used for de-streamed. The final character is used by school boards to distinguish course delivery. For example, with the DDSB, French immersion courses are identified with an F as the sixth character. If a student chooses ENL 1W1, the E denotes that it is an English course, the 1 indicates it is a grade 9 course, and the W identifies it as a de-streamed course. This page comes directly from the Choosing My Success document, and we hope you will spend some time reviewing it with your student to learn more about high school and the supports that are available to them. All students were provided with a step-by-step -step guide of how to access my blueprint. This next part of the presentation will review these steps so you are able to support your student as they select courses. To access my blueprint, students visit the DDSB mobile campus and click on the My Blueprint Square. Once they are in their account, they will click on the Plan Courses from the dashboard. This will open up the high school plan. Now that course selection is open, students will see the name of the secondary school they will be attending in the fall and only courses from this school will be available for selection. If the name of the school listed is incorrect, please have your student reach out to their grade eight teacher on their or their pathway counselor. If you are unsure of the school your, school your student should attend, home schools can be located on the board website under the schools section. To add a course, they will click on the add course or addition sign course to select from the courses at their school. The grade nine column will list the courses that students need to select, such as English, mathematics, science, geography, and French as a second language. In the boxes where no subject is listed, students will select elective courses from those being offered by their high school. Students will also need to select at least one alternate course. The only courses required on the course plan for course selection are the ones for grade nine. Some students like to plan ahead to ensure that they are taking the correct prerequisites for courses that they would like to take in future grades. Any courses that are included in the course plan for future years can be changed or adjusted as your students' interests or goals change and evolve. Once students have populated all of their courses in their course planner, including the alternate, they will click on review course selections. If they have not selected the required number of alternates, they will receive a message um, to add them before progressing any further. On the review course selection page, students will see the courses they have selected for grade nine and be able to submit their course selections. Once they have submitted their selection, they can no longer make changes in my blueprint. In order for parents to, and guardians to review the, and confirm courses, the students will need to click the send approval email button. Please ensure your students has your email address or complete this step with them. Students may send the approval email to more than one email address by clicking on the resend approval email button. 
The process of sending an approval email to parents and guardians is part of the course selection process until a student turns 18. You will receive an email similar to this one, listing the courses your student has selected, and you will be asked to either approve the course selection by clicking on the green button, or reject their request by clicking on the words in red. If you reject your student's course selections, please reach out to your child's grade eight teacher to discuss the changes you would like made. A handout with information about the online approval process was provided to elementary schools and will be included in the resource package that will be emailed to tonight's participants. If there is a concern with your student selected courses after you have approved their courses, you will be contacted by their grade eight teacher or their elementary pr principal. If you have approved the selections and you hear nothing, then your student selections have been completed and your student will receive information regarding their timetable close to the beginning of the 2023-2024 school year. In addition to selecting their courses for grade nine, students can also register for the Getting Ready for High School program. This is a three-day program being offered at each high school from August 21st to August 23rd. This program provides students with a brief introduction to, grade, to the grade nine English and mathematics curriculum, as well as study skills, time management, and steps to success. The program also allows students to become familiar with their new school and prepares them for the transition from elementary school to secondary school. It is especially helpful for students who are experiencing some anxiety related to the upcoming transition. This is a great opportunity for students to explore their high school, meet students and teachers, and increase their comfort level with the transition to high school. To register, students click on Continuing Education from the left-hand menu, then Explore Courses, and then Summer School, Getting Ready for High School. Thanks, everyone. So we know that selecting courses can raise a lot of questions for families and students. I'm like you, I have a, a daughter who's going into grade nine next year. So I completely understand what you're feeling right now and all the questions that come up. So where do you go if you or your student have questions about course selection? Well, there's multiple supports available to you. Your student's grade eight teacher and CERT are available to assist with selecting courses for grade nine. Each elementary school has a dedicated Choosing My Success Transition Pathway Counselor working with students and staff to support the transition. So you can reach out to them as well. And in a little bit, I will share their contact information. So you have that. And our high schools also have a wealth of information on their websites. And a majority of them also have Google Classrooms that our grade eight students are accessing right now. And they're able to share important information. So, and finally, our high school guidance counselors are also available to help you with any questions you may have. So these next few slides will provide you with the contact information for the pathway counselors supporting each area. So please note the specific transition pathway counselors for the Pickering Age Act schools. If you're in the Dunbarton um, family of schools, Stephanie Ware supports you. Jeff Smith, who is here with us this evening, supports Pine Ridge. Allison Warren, who is here as well, supports Pickering. Jeff and Allison both support Ajax, and Jeff also supports our Jay Clark Richardson Family of Schools. For our Whitby and our Brooklyn High Schools, Laura Lee, who's with us this evening, supports both Donald A. Wilson and Sinclair. Stephanie Ware supports Henry Street and Anderson, and Colin, who is here, supports Brooklyn. In the Oshawa area, Allison supports R.S. McLaughlin. Chris Dallal supports our students at O'Neill, Eastdale, and G.L. Roberts. And Colin supports our students at Maxwell Heights. And for our Brock, Uxbridge, and Port Perry schools, Laura supports the Uxbridge family of schools, and Colin supports both Port Perry and Brock. And for our students who are currently at DDSB at home, um, elementary, 
that is Stephanie Wares, who supports those particular students. Just gonna share these documents with you again. Um, we do know that tonight's presentation has focused on that transition from grade eight to grade nine, but many of our families and our students do like to look ahead to explore what the rest of their high school experience is all about and to learn about those programming options. And so I draw your attention to these uh, documents again. And when we do follow up with the email, there will be links to all of these for you. They are also available on our website for you if you would like to, uh, to go ahead and peruse them before that email comes. So this concludes the formal portion of our presentation tonight. Um, we will take all questions posted and share a question answer document with all registered participants in the next week or so. Um, we do encourage you to refer to the specific information posted on the website of your local high school um, follow them on social media. They have very vibrant and active social media accounts where they share a lot of their information about events as well. Um, and information on their websites, of course, gives you all those important details that are specific to your school. So we would like to thank each and every one of you for joining us this evening. We hope you found tonight's presentation helpful. Um, we do understand that there's been a lot of information covered and we look forward to sharing a recording of this presentation along with the resource package of the documents mentioned. Um, I would just like to take a moment and have a look at the Q&A to see if there are any questions that we could address for you this, this evening. So I see that there's a question about the Getting Ready for High School program. The registration for that is available right now. So you can have your student log into my blueprint. And as Laura had mentioned, they can go on to the um, continuing education link that's located on the left-hand side of the menu and they can select it. So Nicole, there was a question about DDSB at home and comprehensive arts. I haven't answered it just because I don't know uh, if those students have a different uh, listing of courses within my blueprint for grade nine. So we may have to look that one up. Yeah, exactly. Um, I only have two screens. If I had a third one, I could look that up for you, but we will respond to that question for you in the Q&A answer just to ensure that we've got accurate information for you. Thank you. No problem. Someone had asked a question about the volunteering hours. If I volunteer more than 40 hours, will I get any benefit? Absolutely. There are many scholarships that are based on volunteer hours. There are even some post-secondary programs that look to see what else have you done above and beyond your academics. So we always encourage our students to do more than 40 hours. It shows that um, you're very well-rounded. Um, and in turn, and another question that I see um, was about scholarships. Every single high school in our district has a copy of the scholarship report and that will be shared in the Google Classrooms that they have for you. And it lists all of these different scholarships that you can access. There's also on our DDSB website, a scholarship section that you are welcome to go in and have a look at as well. So in the follow-up um, email, I'll include some of that information for you. Okay, so there's a couple of questions here regarding if you're coming to us from out of board. So welcome if you are. Um, you are correct that you would not be able to select your courses in my blueprint. What you would do is you would go onto our board website, you would select registration, and that will provide you with the link to, um, to submit your documents for that particular high school. What will happen is once you've made that appointment at your high school, you'll meet with the guidance department and they will sit alongside you and select your courses at that point in time. A 
I see that there's a couple of questions as well that the specialist high skills major program. A great document for you to look at is our Pathways to Student Success document. Um, and I'll link that for you in the follow-up uh, email. I can, and I'll also provide you the name of our, of our facilitator who oversees that and she'll be able to uh, provide you additional information. And I just want to answer one more question here, and it was about the confirmation for the getting ready for high school. So what will happen when you register for that program is about a week or so before the program starts, you will get an email from uh, Continuing Education. Uh, Superintendent Nevels, are, are there any other questions you'd like addressed before we sign off for the evening? I think we've got them mostly answered there in the chat box or just recently live. So thank you for that. Beautiful. So again, everyone, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank you. Um, this is just one of those many activities that's happening to support your students' transition from elementary to secondary school. And we know that each student brings their own unique Where gifts. Sorry, I'm at home with my kids. Uh, each student brings their own unique gifts and together we can support their success. So be sure to reach out should you have any questions or you need some support with those next steps. So thank you very much, everyone, and have a wonderful evening.